We've all been there. You open your shock drawer and you might as well insert a screaming sound effect because it is so scary and so pathetic in there, all right? But now is the perfect time to give it a little zhuzh, a little oomph, a little spring cleaning and refresh. Bombas just dropped a bunch of absurdly soft new socks, tees, and underwear to help you get that drawer in a better place while doing a little good. They are the most comfortable socks I have ever put on my body. You guys know I'm an actual Bombas loyalist. I'm obsessed, but the thing I love most about it is Bomba's mission, okay? For everything purchased, one purchased equals one donated. Every time you buy their socks, tees, or underwear, you're also going to donate essential clothing to someone facing homelessness. And to date, Bomba's has donated over a hundred million clothing items and counting, and I am proud to be a part of that because I got comfy socks, and hopefully I'm helping someone else get comfy socks too. They've got a hundred percent happiness guarantee. What is not to love about this company? I almost said company. So get comfy this spring and give back with Bombas. Head over to bombas.com slash TMGW and use code TMGW for 20% off your first purchase. That's B-O-M-B-A-S dot com slash TMGW and use code TMGW at checkout for 20% off your first purchase. I recommend purchasing quite a bit. Take advantage of that deal. I wish I still had it if I were ever so young. This might get weird. Are we rolling? We're rolling. Well, then cheers, Grace Helbig. Cheers, memory heart. Woo, woo, woo. We are recording at 530, and I'm actually at a hotel right now. So my ass got a happy hour, skinny margarita from the bar for this occasion. Very nice. Very nice. I had the tiniest, tiniest of weed uh, drink right before this so if i get if i get a little looser as the episode Ah. continues we'll know why well well, what's so funny is i um well we did our live stream on sunday for patreon which was so freaking funny you guys (laughs) i like you're you're gonna hear this before easter and we were a full week early which is just so funny because neither grace and i are religious and we did an easter live stream yeah but we decorated eggs to look like celebrities and then had to guess the celebrity with the matching egg pun name. Yeah. A fucking it, blast. It was so, <laughs> so fun and so dumb. And then also my dad and stepmom have been in town for a week and they just left on Monday morning. So after our live stream, I went to the very last like dinner with them in town. The final meal. Trying to explain to them what it was that I did that day. I was like, if you, okay, so you guys are probably curious, like how I make money. Uh, let me <laughs> explain this to you. I know the amount of times I say, like I'm uploading a picture of me holding an egg that, that is made to look like weird Al Yokovich as I'm literally talking to a friend being like, I would just like to be a little more taken seriously as... <laughs> As a performer, oh. a writer, and a human. It's like, <laughs> but oh. meanwhile, it's like, now let me find the best picture of this Weird Al Yolkovich egg. It was okay? so fun. Thank you to all of our patrons that showed up. If you are interested, heads up, we have a Patreon. And next Monday? Well, that's why I was, that's what made me think about it when you said yes. you had a tiny bit of a weed drink. Yes. Is, you, is the great idea of our April live well, stream. Well, was it was patron submitted. Everyone mm. was like, the next live stream should be 420. So I believe we'll be doing a 420 live stream on Patreon on 420 uh, <laughs> next month. I don't need to keep saying when it is. It says it. Yes, it right. Is. Yeah, it's the actual date. <laughs> Three things. Some cloud coverage just happened or the sun dipped. So I just went from a bright sunny day to looking like I'm coming from a deep nighttime <laughs> chamber. You look like you're hiding in someone's closet. Truly. I mean, <laughs> please, the metaphorical, everyone's hiding in someone's closet. Uh-huh. Um, but, t- okay, two things. One, when someone suggested 420, they were like, oh, 420 2024 is a palindrome. Yep. Yep. Which I was Crazy. happy I heard not high because yeah, I was exactly. like, well, uh, I'm sorry, what magic is going to happen that day? Yeah. And also, it got I immediately got nervous because I was like, am I going to get high on this podcast? I don't think I've ever been high online. No, I don't. Ever. I have, I, like, I had the tiniest, tiniest bit. I, have ne- I, I get high at night in the privacy of my own home 
and yeah. I get so nervous about accessing my technology in any way <laughs> to show up for anything. Um, the other quick thing about our Patreon is next Monday, April 1st on April Fool's Day, I'll be hosting our <gasps> book, uh, Barflies book club live stream. Um, and the book is House in the Cerulean Sea and it's so good i only have i've been listening to the audio version on audible uh shout out if we have an ad for them this week oh that would be integration so i know we convenient. had one last week uh <laughs> but i have like an hour left and it's so good that and it's so like heart-wrenching and also i started this medication that i have to take for like the next five years last week yeah and I just am a casual so five years. Cas- <laughs> this is, these are the weirdest sentences, guys. I know, but this medication makes me has been been making me so emotional that really? I've just been listening to this book crying in my car. Uh, it is so sweet. I don't know exactly what's going to happen yet. I'm kind of like taking my time because I don't want it to end. But next Monday, April first at four p.m. Pacific time i will be doing our barflies live stream so come join if you like that book or even if you haven't read it come join come hang out yeah it'll be fun okay well then to piggyback off that and look yeah. at us doing like housekeeping actual, up top house housekeeping up top look at this <laughs> housekeeping up top speaking of housekeeping here's another thing yeah is um which i kind of like this hotel i'm staying at which is called the uh life house hotel in palm springs we'll get into it yes i am in a hotel in palm springs our house is rented and i had to get away yeah we're um, booked and busy hooray we're booked and, bu- we're booked and busy and still broke um <laughs> <laughs> is they have the like text concierge which you know i'm a big fan of you mm-hmm. text the you have to text by 9 a.m Mm. on the day if you want housekeeping and if so what time is most convenient right, right which right. i like because i was in bed this morning thinking oh am i finally gonna fall back asleep and housekeeping is gonna knock on the door yeah and i was like oh no you could like schedule it around when you have a lunch reservation yeah that's ah! nice okay but anyway after your uh bar flies i'm gonna do the idea of you which is the novel that that new anne hathaway movie is coming out about and mm-hmm. i decided to do it like bef- we'll we'll bar flies like two days before the movie comes out or something like that but i it's another one grace where i um decided to do it and then all the dms were like that's a really horny book <laughs> So I'm just like really becoming the half of the bar flies that's like, and let's talk about orgasms. Oh no. <laughs> you're like you're like at, yours is probably about grief, which I've done plenty of those novels for bar flies. But yeah. now I'm someone was like, that's a spicy book, maybe. I, I was like, uh oh. That's the thing about choosing books. I've been uh, sourcing out to our patrons who have been so awesome at recommendations because I realized left to my own devices to find books like I I chose one trick mirror last year that I loved but it was was nonfiction right nonfiction and my brother and Tim had bought it for me for like Christmas one year and I hadn't read it so I was like if Tim thinks I should read it let's let's all read it it was so challenging I was like oh man and even like the patrons were like this was a challenging book and I was like I know I'm so sorry this I barely was able to like really really focus because some of the material and thoughts are extremely like profound and deep uh so it's it's always like a crab or crap shoot over we'll never on our know. patreon we'll never know oh my god look at us we just promoted ourselves and we didn't wait till the last second when everyone's like and uh now we're done with the podcast so i'll log yeah, off exactly pretty look great go. um no sunday was so much fun and now i am i'm in palm springs doing a writing retreat yeah so you we're- find that it's you're going down for no distractions, right? Right. Well, it's like before we we got our house, I would come down here and stay yeah. at the Ace uh, by myself with beans. And I would just like not talk to anyone and everyone would be hanging out by the pool and I would like saunter out like the yeah. weird the weird pigeon lady and just be <laughs> like, you know, like, ah, yeah. sunshine, grab a drink and go back to my room. Well, that's like I have so much writing that I want to do this year, but I'm having a hard time focusing like in my own place and I keep considering like I should just go somewhere that's yeah like forces you into a different zone exactly where you go like this is a different alternate universe and like I have to work because you know our homes are our fun zones 
yeah that's the thing the associations are so fun and so <laughs> chill uh that it's nice to put yourself in a totally different reality to be like the grace in this reality writes her stuff all day right long. exactly as opposed to if i'm in my own home it's like i look at my couch and i'm like don't look at me like that yeah yeah exactly like, like i'll like, see you after work i know four <laughs> o'clock comes around and i'm like i am done for the day yeah. right but so i'm down here because i'm starting a new writing project and i was like let me just get out here with my friend kiwi and let's like go pedal to the metal for three days yeah but grace i'm 1.5 miles from our house and i like i've had to stop myself from just like parking in front of it Driving and like by. S- and like <laughs> seeing who it's hanging out with like i'm <laughs> jealous yeah yeah i know it is, that is weird and that is just for the record we have never gone by our house no while someone is renting no, it no, no no don't worry <laughs> but it truly i feel like in high school like we had yeah. nothing to do when we were in high school and so we were literally we would be like well let's drive past the boy's house we like and yeah. see if he's his car's in the driveway yeah. which sounds stalkery but like it it didn't feel that way at the time this no. was before instagram story this was before, this was before cell phones you couldn't track yep. someone down it was kind of like well where are they hanging out are they at yeah. the movie theaters the bowling alley the mcdonald's parking lot or is their house at <laughs> is their car at home you know so and it I, was romantic I, it was like a romantic investigation <laughs> I mean, uh, you would leave a note on someone's windshield. That's crazy. Yeah, you would. And you'd be like, like, hey, I'm going to the movies. Like, stop by after. That that crazy? That. Oh, man. The amount of things that could go wrong with that gives me such Uh anxiety now. But you had no other choice. No choice. But anyway. okay. so I'm in Palm Springs and very lovely. The hotel is great. Did not realize this is the spring break week for (gasps) children oh shoot so i think i forgot palm springs allowed children to even exist here children when would i interact with them you mean college students no i mean families with their children who are out (gasps) of school this week so they are here having family vacations oh damn damn yeah oh please if it was mtv spring break i we would have we would this podcast would go up late because I'd be in a wet t-shirt contest right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what uh, my dad was telling us about how because he you know in an effort to relate to Elliot who is from Florida and like have conversation <laughs> he was like so you heard about all the places in Florida that are um, uh, like vetoing spring break like Daytona oh, Beach wow. and all these places are like we're done. We're sick of it. No, you can't come down here anymore. <gasps> I have no idea how they're enforcing it, but I right? guess there's a big uh, push down there to stop the spring break festivities, which it's like, wow, Florida, but also, <laughs> what? You've but, been doing this for decades. <laughs> De- I mean, I've been to, uh, where was it? I've been to Panama City for a spring break. Mm. I went, I stayed in Daytona for one night on my way to a spring break. It was crazy. I bet. We went out and to that's a why club. they want it shut down. <laughs> well, but the thing is, you have to think of tourism. So that's what I mean. I was like, and also, I can't imagine like being like, I live in Daytona Beach all year round. <laughs> right? <laughs> I, I don't. <laughs> no shade. No shade. Rev your engines. But anyway, I forgot that it's like, oh, right. Like, uh, we did not go on vacation for spring break when I was a child. I, I didn't remember. even, I don't even clock it. I don't know if like this has become more of a thing because yeah. I feel like we got maybe an extra two days off and that just meant we had to hang out in our yard more. Yeah. But there are so many kids here on spring break and like, uh, you know, reservations for any type of restaurant that it might be kind of kid friendly. It's crazy. And it made me think. Because you might actually hear in the background, I know these are very good mics, but I feel like some pools, Mm -hmm. you know how it'll be like no diving, et cetera. Mm -hmm. I feel like there should be Marco Polo free zones. Yeah. Yeah. Before we got on this call, it was just children screaming Marco Polo for like 45 minutes. And that game... That game has no boundaries. So that game can be expansive and take over an entire property if Mm -hmm. kids are crazy enough. Uh, Mm -hmm. I'm with you. I feel like, are kids still playing Marco Polo? Wow. They are. Like, where is, let's get some new shit in the pool. 
<laughs> not sh- not actual shit but like let's like we're still that's the best we can do is marco polo <laughs> yeah also, was he even a good guy feels dangerous feels yeah. like a kid could get hurt i don't mm-hmm. know so anyway i'm just hearing a lot of children and, nice and remembering why i don't have any <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah, I just ran up to Target real quick to pick up a prescription and there were two twins in a cart together and they were squawking at each other back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And this mom is just ignoring them and checking out. And I'm just like sitting there staring at them being like, they're ruthless in this Ruth noise <laughs> was it was it english or was it you know english. Those, you know how like twins have their own languages sometimes yeah no they were adorable twins but they were oh man the one kid just kept being like steffi's blowing kisses she's blowing kisses mom <laughs> and the mom was not paying. i wanted to be like she got it she's got it <laughs> stop stop it and i had to chill out uh, oh. Hungry Root is the easiest way to eat healthy. They send you fresh, high quality groceries, simple recipes, and essential supplements. It's like your personal assistant for healthy living. Here's what you do. You take a fun, short quiz and Hungry Root will get to know your personal health goals, what you like to eat, and more. Then they'll build a personalized cart with all of your grocery needs for the week and give you delicious recipe recommendations to put those groceries to use. Each order is fully customizable, so you can take their suggestions or you can choose anything that you want. They've got fresh produce, high quality meat and seafood, healthy snacks, smoothies, sweets, ready to eat meals, kids snacks, and vitamins and supplements and more. I have loved Hungry Root. It was one of the easiest ways to stock up on healthful groceries, especially in the last year. They delivered super simple kale salad with chicken. We even had this one sandwich that Elliot got obsessed with. It was like a Thanksgiving sandwich. It was so easy. It was on a stuffing bagel. I've never even heard of stuffing bagels before. It was sliced turkey on a stuffing bagel with cranberry sauce and uh, some sort of creamy cheese. Okay, now I'm getting too far into it. Anyway, it was fantastic. (laughs) And right now, Hungry Root is offering, this might get weird listeners, 40% off your first delivery and free veggies for life. You just go to HungryRoot.com slash TMGW to get 40% off your first delivery and get your free veggies. That's HungryRoot.com slash TMGW. Don't forget to use our link so they know that we sent you. Be honest. Are you that one friend in the friend group that loves to treat yourself? It's okay. Honestly, we all do it. You know, you're the one that when you go to get a pedicure, you opt for the extra 10 minute foot massage with a green tea infused lotion. Or maybe while everyone else is brewing their job in the morning, you refuse to make coffee at home and you want that fancy coffee shop. Okay. You want that latte that has a little swan drawn in oat milk on top. Treating yourself is lovely, but why not treat yourself with all aspects of your life? Okay. If you treat yourself with top options with everything else, why settle when finding a doctor? It is your health after all. Well, enter ZocDoc, the place where you can find and book tens of thousands of top tier doctors, all with verified patient reviews. I don't go to a restaurant before I read reviews. Why would I go to a doctor? Why would I go get a pap smear before I hear some firsthand accounts of what that bedside manner is? You know what I'm saying? Don't settle. Go for the best and find the right doctor for you with ZocDoc. You've got more options than you know and also it's so convenient. I'm telling you, said it before, I've said it a million times, I have booked multiple, and I'm talking probably a dozen by now, doctor's appointments of all different ranges, whether it was a teeth cleaning to, like I said, a pap smear, an allergist, just a regular, I've got a cold, do I need antibiotics, doctor? Within 12 hours, I am in the waiting room and being seen and knowing that they are taking my insurance. ZocDoc is a free app and website where you can search and compare highly rated in-network doctors near you and instantly book appointments with them online. No more trying to find a place, trying to schedule an appointment and then realizing they don't take your insurance. It's all in there. Once you find the doc you want, book them immediately and no more waiting awkwardly on hold with a receptionist, okay? We're talking about booking appointments with tens of thousands of top rated, patient reviewed, credible doctors and specialists and it's usually between 24 to 72 hours, all right? Sometimes you can even score same day appointments. I can't even get reservations at certain restaurants that quickly. So if you wanna give it a try, um, check it out now before there's actually something that you need a 
doctor for, you know, have the app ready so that when something comes up, you are good to go by going to ZocDoc.com slash weird and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top rated doctor today. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C.com slash weird. ZocDoc.com slash weird. Man, we took children are crazy. My cousin was visiting, um, my cousin was visiting LA. Well, I saw you oh, yeah. with your family and then I saw yes. you on the live stream. It's so funny. I'm like hugging your parents by and I'm like, I'll see you in 12 hours, Grace. <laughs> I know. I know. And it was so sweet. My stepmom loves you, obviously. I know. And I we love her so much that, too. Uh, a lot. And it, it was so, I have these photos candid of you guys hugging. And really? Yeah. Like when you got there and I wish it was a little bit turned around because Maureen's face when you got there was like she was starstruck. It was so sweet. I loved it. I was like, I'm Yay. obsessed with her and she is looking snatched to the gods yes. um, in our merch. Uh, still a little. Um, <laughs> but anyway, my cousin was in town who, if you guys are OG fans, uh, you might remember Grace and I doing videos when we would visit LA before either of us moved here and her cat was in them and she's so funny she was like what was the name of that video that like you guys how you guys house sat and then all of a sudden there was a video on daily grace called like how to clean your pussy or something about my cat (laughs) how to take care of your pussy she was like all of a sudden I was like well my cat's famous (laughs) yeah that was when the internet was like private and yeah. you could, like, uh, you, we felt like we had our own little world and we were just using whatever resources were around yes. us. There were no, there would be no news outlets that would pick up anything that <laughs> any of us did ever. So yeah. it was just free range. But so we were chatting and um, and I met her kids because they were both pandemic babies and she lives on the wow. East Coast. And like, we just had a couple times where like, we almost saw each other. Yeah. Um, But I loved this. Her little one was, you know, like she was... I got there at five o'clock. So she was basically like toddler drunk, you know, just like put this thing to bed. Put this thing. (laughs) You are cut off. Slobbery, (laughs) roly poly. (laughs) Like you are done, man. So, you know, she gets in her little jammies. We all say good night. She's so cute. And then how toddlers want to like sleep in the same room, which makes sense. They have these. I don't, I don't know what they're called, but it was basically like a little tent Mm-hmm. They put her little bed in that's a like completely like blackout. Whoa. So it's like a black tent. So they're like, yeah, so we can come into our room and have the lights on and she doesn't wake up. That's so smart. I was wow. like, I want this tent. Yeah. How do you get that for Chip so that he's not <laughs> I disturbed? I, I know. How do like, I just put like a cloche on yeah. top of him. <laughs> So the sun comes up and I do my thing and he's yeah. still in the dead of night in there. <laughs> that's gotta exist somewhere. Oh, but I was so like, fun. what a great invention. Truly great. I I would love one of those. I um, loved it. And very then also cool. she was telling me about because she's she's my cousin that like was raised near DC and you know had lawyer parents and okay. she's my like you know, she's my one sliver of the family that has their shit together. Okay. Um, yes. And she always went to this school that I remember going to visit her. I'm a couple years older than her, but we still hung out because we were the two girl cousins. Yeah. Um, and I love her. And she went to this school where they like farmed and they like took care of chickens. And like it was very like hippy dippy, but through the lens of like bougie. Okay. Okay. And her and her son, he was telling me about his school. He goes to a school. The style of the school is called Waldorf. Right. Yes. Which already rich that's that sounds so rich yeah i feel like that's a it's a salad that has like fruit and nuts in it you're a salad with grapes okay grapes there it is yeah like (laughs) what i have a i have a cocktail in my book based on that salad nice um but anyway where they spend like 60 to 70 percent of the day outside and they were telling me about it like they do all this stuff (laughs) outside in my mind i went that's impossible it's not impossible I know it's great they were and it's in Virginia it's in Maryland and so they were like talking about it and I guess there's all these studies of how like kids 
like across the board again i'm just being told this i have not researched it myself yeah uh, or like even googled it yeah a total hearsay uh but like uh, all this stuff about like kids are so much better at these different things if they spend a certain amount of t- time outside wow. so they do a lot of activities outside but they also take cl- their classes outside and i'm like well i'm like well what if it gets kind of like they have certain pants they wear to, okay. I was like, what if it gets cold? It's winter. They're like, they have certain clothes they wear. And mm-hmm. and, li- and my little cousin's son was like, we have a basket of hand warmers. <laughs> like they have hand warmers. <laughs> I said to, I said wow. to Hallie, I was like, I was like, I can't even imagine what you're paying for this. She's like, oh, it's absurd. And I was like, yeah, I have a fenced in yard. <laughs> I'll have my I'll, you can have your kid come do labor I'll teach yeah. a math for an hour a day for the yeah. tuition I'm seeing it's insane wow that's wild I uh, just look I think mm. of like all these private schools and like they cost more than my college did yeah yeah they're uh I mean they're interesting and they're like that dream kind of education you absolutely know, that's so progressive and interesting and like literally of the earth that you're like yeah but i was always destined to be an internet indoor kid i think so it would have been a real waste of my parents money yeah i don't want to build a chicken coop no i literally we still have plants all of our succulents are pushed up against the side of the house from when we had the hurricane uh (laughs) hurricane that's how poor i am at doing my landscaping and maintaining the natural flora and fauna around me. But that is on my to-do list. I actually am like, I need to go outside. Um, It's good for my soul and my skin and uh, my heart, I think. So I got to start adding that, especially because I just started week four of Beastbody. And tell the people, tell the people how big that bicep is. Because I touched it Mm -hmm. on Sunday during the live stream (laughs) and was, I mean, like, I was not kidding at all. I was blown yeah. away. It's weird. It's so, I keep saying it's goofy. It's silly. Which, by the way, uh, Elliot and I, tomorrow, we're going to Disneyland. So that's going to be super exciting. Okay. Uh, do you have a route? Like, do you plan ahead? Do you know the has, things you want to hit that you haven't yet? Or have you hit everything before? We did a really, really great job last time we were there. I don't know yeah. by accident because we were just very go with the flow. It was the two of us. It was like whatever rides we can get on. <clears throat> we had Genie Pass and like Fast Pass or whatever, um, which we're going to get this time. I have planned zero. He has an idea in his mind of like loosely where he'd want to go. And he's mm. way more adept at the parks than I am. I just get very overloaded with, oh, my God, there's so much shit. He actually can parse out like exactly where we should go. And we have a park jumper, I guess, where you can go to both oh. uh, parks. So we're going to try to do both. So we're doing it all just in one day. We're not staying over uh, at the theme parks this time. So we're going to see how much I can, you know, get through stamina wise, yeah. which is why I like beast body feeling good, excited to actually put that into practice by walking around a park all day. Um, okay. Two things. Yeah. One, I feel like since Elliot worked at a park and was an actual cast member, yes. as you say, a I feel like of- friend of Walt, what do they call it? Friend of Goofy is what you would say like oh, if you were friend, Goofy. That's that I've heard. I forget if that's actually. I'm sorry, true. but if he doesn't own Friend of Goofy LLC, yeah, he is yeah. missing out. <laughs> but okay, first, I feel like if you are trusted at that level at the park at any time, you should have like a special enamel pin or something that like lets you skip lines. That's like I'll if say you were that. previously employed. Yeah, yeah. like yeah. you should you should get a benefit like that. Yeah, I agree. Um. Oh, but speaking of Elliot's previous employment. Oh. All right. So uh, we took Goose to the vet yesterday. That was like our big thing yesterday because her ears, she gets chronic ear infections. And it's always everyone knows like a hassle for me to take her. I have to sedate her before we go. And Elliot used to be a vet like tech uh, for like seven years, which I In- for- insane i forget all the time so we're there and goose gets taken back and like we're just like hanging out in the little vet room and i was like yeah how long have you were you like working in veterinary hospitals and he was like seven years and i was like was it just cats and it's like like we're married but these are questions as if we're dating (laughs) and i was like 
These are third date questions, I know. Grace. I was like, was it just cats and dogs or was it like all animals? And he was like, one time in Gainesville, Florida, uh, we had to euthanize a rat and we were in a room like this and there were 12 people in the room sobbing because they had to euthanize a rat. Oh! <laughs> I was like, I was like that is the most fucking Gainesville, Florida thing I've ever heard that 12 people are in a room crying while Elliot, who's probably in his early 20s, is killing their rat in front of them. Meanwhile, I'm in the little sliver of a window doing the Arsenio <laughs> Hall to have him put down. <laughs> Exactly. Wow. I was like, have you ever done stand up with that? Because that is the most insane that's, thing. He's like, nah. That's my yeah. favorite story I've ever heard about Elliot besides the Nickelodeon commercial. Oh like, my God, I know. <laughs> do a whole set about it. Oh my God. So wild. Yeah. So Who's that attached had, to a rat? I, Florida. Freaks. I mean, just so wild. Just so wild to euthanize anything. But then for it to be a rat and for there to be 12 people crying while you're doing it. Like, yeah. I, the, we're, like I was so, I get so nervous. Same with you taking the dogs to the vet. And so it's basically Elliot taking both me and Goose to the vet. And he has to be like the calm one. And like the whole time I was just sitting there being like, Man, this is the craziest job. He's like, oh, it's incredibly stressful. It is. I cannot beyond. imagine because even like when Beans was got really sick a couple yeah. weeks ago, like I was parked at the vet at six thirty that opened at seven. Oh, and then when yeah. I walked in the door, when literally they switched the sign to open, yeah. and I walked through the door, I watched the two people there answer the phone and just go can i put you on hold can i put you on hold for like 30 calls the yeah. second it turned seven. Oh, it's crazy we were sitting there and i was so stressed about goose while we were just like waiting and there was this woman that we could hear at the front desk that was like going through very like directly not you know sweetly or nicely it was just like talking at the receptionist about what she needed for her dog meanwhile all you hear is like and she's like lucky stop and you just hear and I started cracking up because it sounded like a fucking Martin Short character, like tap dancing wildly. Just, and she just, just Clifford. Being, yeah. She, and she's like, Lucky, stop it. Lucky, stop. And she just kept. And then she'd be like almost like yelling at these receptionists. And I was like, this is wild. Everyone. We love these pets. We love it's these the pets so much. It's like I told you when I went there just for like a checkup before beans was sick when it was just a regular one and that woman was like saying to her cat you think i want to be here too yeah <laughs> you think i want to be here yeah, exactly. okay tone it down hun <laughs> like so crazy oh speaking of animals yeah oh multiple um so i kiwi and i went to take our pups for a walk last night around dusk mm -hmm. um because she has a little chihuahua named mr scoots right yeah uh who is hilarious um but we're walking and we walk past you know little condo apartment area and i went oh my god there were like five hummingbird feeders mm -hmm. and it was right on the street and then there were four people sitting in chairs holding the little hummingbird <gasps> like the little portable ones you put in your hand and hummingbirds yeah. were flying all around <gasps> and there was like a dry erase board that said like hummingbird happy hour oh my god and there was just an old man with white hair and like a fucking david crosby mustache and i went oh that's fantastic he goes do you want to give it a try like kiwi was on a mission or yeah. you know me i would have still be at their house yeah <laughs> like, you'd be covered in I'd be like, i'm sorry chip i got married to four people last night i didn't <laughs> yeah. even know that was legal I've joined a commune it's yeah. so fun so he was like you want to give it a shot and i go oh honey i've made hats before <laughs> and he so was like that's, that's not my first rodeo uh-uh girl <laughs> this is not my first apiary and so no that's those are bees aviary there um, you go so but then i just kind of watched them and i was like what an adorable thing to do uh, for your it. little apartment complex is uh, to go hey we're gonna have i got some little humming and people were holding them in their hand they were coming up and i was like uh, to host that that's amazing so cute a hummingbird happy hour so pure so lovely i'm all for it I loved it. And then I have one more um, small animal story for you. Yeah. 
There's no rats, thank God. But okay. I went to my coffee shop the other day, and as they're making, as they're heating up my oat milk, yeah. um, I go and I look at the, com- the community board because that's just so fun to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a community boards, it's really where you see the flavor of the neighborhood. Yeah, you get a little taste of what's going on in these streets. Yeah, I want to know these open mics. I want to yeah. know who's my local handyman, et cetera, et cetera. So, okay, let me find it. So I saw it was like a hand-drawn sign. Oh, come on. I'm like, now I'm going to need you to vamp as I find this. <laughs> oh, oh uh, okay. Oh, sorry. It was a hand-drawn sign that was basically like a picture of a buff dude. Uh-huh. Um, and it and it was like got uh, got any bud uh, any bug beds bed bugs bed <laughs> sorry I can't talk <laughs> I'm on three hours of sleep it was like got any bed bugs even uh-huh. one bed bug we will come take care of it for you handsome exterminators at your fingertips right what? <laughs> with like a and I'll put it on Patreon with like a drawing of like a, a shirtless guy, right? And I was like, this is insane. <laughs> that like, feels so creepy. So creepy. And I had a QR code. And so of course hand I was drawn? like- Hand drawn? No, no, no. That was actually, <laughs> that was actually printed a <laughs> hand drawn QR code. It's amazing. <laughs> so I was like, well, obviously I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to look at it. And so I hit it and it was, and it took me to tickets to a- uh, a play it was just oh a, that's but it, it's not about bed bugs it's not about exterminators it's called a finger pointing at the moon a new play by oren calgain or whatever but i was like what a interesting way yeah to get someone to learn about a play because no one was gonna go let me go see this random play but people were gonna go what's up with this fucking bed bug exterminator yeah i didn't like it now i like it but also too if i was him or whoever is doing this play, I'd want to immediately get on stage and be like, who's here because of that? Yeah. Who did How that did work marketing? on? Yeah, let me get some data. How did this uh, go over for everyone? I mean, I kind of want to go to the play and just show up and be like, so I have bed bugs. Yeah. I I really feel, you know, swindled. <laughs> yeah, I feel like <laughs> there's a con artist among us. Right? <laughs> uh mm-hmm. Interesting, though. Very interesting. People are mm-hmm. getting uh, very progressive with their marketing. You got to do what you got to do, man. It's hard out here. Okay. Real talk. Mamrie and I were just talking <laughs> offline about how much we love Skims. Like, literally just five minutes after recording this episode of the podcast, her and I just talking about everything we love about them and her showing me that she brought their pajamas with her down to Palm Springs. And it's just, we love skims, okay? I generally find bras to be very uncomfortable, very constricting. I've always been like a sports bra girl, but they're not very sexy, you know? Sports bras, not that sexy. But skims makes the most comfortable and sexy bras that I've really ever tried in my adult life. I've tried their Fits Everybody t-shirt bra and it's like the best t-shirt bra I've ever owned. I wear it like almost every day and it comes in like every color now and the Fits Everybody material is the best material for all day comfort. I absolutely love it. Some other notable winners that I love are their wireless form t-shirt bra, their no-show online demi bra, and their weightless scoop bra. I love them okay shop skims bras at skims.com now available in 62 sizes 30a to 46h and if you haven't yet be sure to let them know that we sent you after you place your order you select podcasts in the survey and select our show in the drop down menu that follows did you know that nearly 75% of people have subscriptions that they have forgotten about? Uh, yeah, before I started using Rocket Money, I thought, you know, maybe I spend a couple hundred dollars on subscriptions and then I actually went on Rocket Money and saw how much I spent and then I rocketed into the sky and exploded because I couldn't believe how many things I was signed up for that I absolutely forgot about, okay? Maybe I wanted to watch a show on a streaming service I didn't have and then after I watched it or halfway through I realized I didn't want to watch it anymore, I forgot that my seven 
seven day trial was going to keep charging me for three more years or perhaps you move in with your boyfriend or they move in with you and why are you both paying for Netflix why is this happening and neither one of you realize it till you're just out a lot of money you guys you gotta get rocket money in your corner rocket money is incredible it saves you so much money by showing you what you're paying for and then it helps you both either cancel that subscription that you no longer want or they haggle with that subscription to get your bill down it's a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions monitors your spending and helps lower your bills so that you can grow your savings you guys you're throwing money into nothing all right when you get rocket money you can see all of your subscriptions in one place and if you see something you don't want send in all rocket money the muscle all right they'll help you cancel with a few taps they've got a dashboard that shows you your month's spending compared to last month so you can clearly see your spending habits plus they're going to help you create a custom budget and keep spending on track they'll even like i said try to negotiate lower bills for you it's like you've got a lawyer up in there and sometimes they can negotiate them down by 20 percent. all you have to do is submit a picture of your bill and rocket money takes care of the rest they'll deal with customer service for you okay don't be on hold rocket money has over 5 million users and has saved a total of 500 million in canceled subscriptions that is absolutely bonkers saving their members up to 740 dollars a year when using all the apps features you guys that's a round trip ticket on that vacation you have been wanting to take so stop wasting money on things you don't use cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash tmgw that's rocketmoney.com slash tmgw rocketmoney.com slash tmgw what are you waiting for um speaking of animal updates okay a couple uh housekeeping with the animals that we've talked about before stingray still pregnant weird wait people, yeah what people are, are they like, supposed to last that long uh, that's everyone's a bit unsure i went on reddit people are uh like it will take a long time and then someone was like i don't think they've been talking about it because parenthenogis parenthenogenesis whatever this like get yourself self- knocked up yeah it, in captivity the babies have little chance of surviving so, oh, so that's sad. what like people are like oh this will probably end in tragedy but then i went to their facebook page and they were like stingray updates wednesday and saturday like because i guess everyone is just going there because this is like made news now um and then the eagles in big bear um it seems like i uh their nest was raided by ravens stop it yeah according to uh when was this posted beginning of march but everyone was already kind of like oh i don't think these eggs are going to hatch anyway there's possibility that they were never fertilized or that something stopped their development because they Wait, were sitting what's on shadow them way doing? Past, like what wasn't the male uh, eagle shadow shadow and jackie yeah so I don't I don't know how you can I, I don't know. But this is apparently what happened the year before, too. I didn't realize that this was like an annual thing that the eggs didn't hatch previously. So everyone was like really fingers crossed for the eggs this time. And it looks like no more eggs and the stingrays babies might die. So all of this. Jesus <laughs> Christ. Wait, but last year it was the same eagles, right? Like we're I invested- believe so that these so are we're the just eagles wa- of Big Bear. So we're just watching like a really sad fertility journey of That's what, our national um, bird. Yeah, because I was really excited and watching Jackie, um, you know, a few days in a row. And then Elliot said a friend of his said that the eggs didn't hatch last year. So it might not happen this year. And I was like, that's a possibility. Fuck. OK. And then I had to, like, stop watching because I was getting very upset because oh Jackie was God. just still sitting on them. So determined. And it was no. very sad. Oh, Anyway, this just, is the those are the updates critter on the update animals. of all time. Well, also, we have a possum. So that's okay, the new let's talk about it. New critter corner here. It's out by Elliot's office and he's gotten a few videos of it. And we have one video on our ring camera that I think is the possum because we have so much activity. We have raccoons. We guys have so many around. raccoons and, and coyotes and coyotes walking around. And there's so much going on here. <laughs> but now there's a possum. <laughs> and the other night on the ring camera, you just see these like. Uh, from underneath like uh the wall out there just like two glowing eyes rise up and then like slowly move towards the front of the house and then like veer off onto the side uh, because it's not the most clear camera at night so i have no idea if this was a raccoon or the uh, possum but 
We'll see. The opossum seems to have potentially made nest near-ish Elliot's You're office. You're lucky. You're lucky. They're wonderful. They take care of rodents. Yeah. They eat lots of stuff. They're gentle. I mean, don't get comfortable to the point where I did with Randy, where I tried <laughs> to feed him a blackberry. <laughs> like where I was no, two inches from his that. face being like, come on, bud, you earned it. <laughs> yeah, no, we haven't gotten to that, but we'll keep everyone posted uh, as the story develops. Um, wow. Yeah, we'll see. This is, um, to me, an exciting development. We haven't had a possum here, so we'll, we'll see. I haven't had, Randy hasn't been back. Well, they only live for like one year or two years. Well, Randy was multiple possums. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's like, true, that's true. <laughs> Randy was multiple possums, but it was like every year we got one kind of like teenage possum. Yeah. And it was almost like word got out that they were like, that that place ain't cool anymore. Like, I feel right. like we are a bar in Silver Lake in LA and all of a sudden they're like yeah do you hear about the owner tried to feed yes. Randy a blackberry like that place that place is cringe yeah like that would have <laughs> killed him like <laughs> no I googled it first I googled no, yeah, it I, 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 I it's more like I would have died because I'm yeah. just like at his mouth but yeah I feel like I kind of got maybe in a couple springs you know it'll flip around and it'll be ironic to go to my place We'll see. We'll see. We'll see if they like what they're up to over here or if they also hate it. Um, also, did you see that the Cadbury bunny this year, because uh, they choose like an actual animal as the Cadbury mm. bunny every year that's voted by the public. Uh, and Louis the raccoon has become the Cadbury bunny this year, and he's the first of his species to earn the title. Wow. You said what's his name? Louie. Louie. Yeah. Uh, and Louie, he, I believe I've seen him on Instagram because he... Is he uh, a pet? He, he, yeah, he's a rescue um, because he was unfit to live in the wild. He was rescued in like 2021. But Imagine he, being unfit to be a raccoon. I feel like that's me. Like that <laughs> someone went, you shouldn't be out in the wild, you feral thing. Get in here and sit down. <laughs> totally. This, um, he uh makes paintings okay. and they sell them to uh benefit wildlife rescue and rehabilitation centers so okay. he's on instagram doing some art i'm pretty sure i've seen him but i also yeah. i mean as you know i have been supporting the ikea monkey for yes. <laughs> nine years for nine years i've been sending 500 dollars to the ikea monkey are you serious yeah. every year Every year. I'm insane. I'm insane. We have to figure out your finances. <laughs> okay. Well, here's we the deal. Get, how do you explain that on Rocket Money? If, uh, Rocket Money is going to aggregate all your subscriptions and be like, what is this one $500 to somewhere over in Eastern Europe right now? Here's the deal. It might be more like 400 but I know I was doing like a, a $200 donation and one year they accidentally charged me twice and then I was just yeah. like, the monkeys need it so yeah. i so it's just like once a year i go like what is this charge oh it's the <laughs> ikea monkey and i get updates and i get pictures <laughs> yeah and all that i mean you know like it's truly it's wow you know i there's a couple things there's like three things i've been donating to that specific sanctuary i think it's yeah. called stony brook i'm not sure in canada which mm -hmm. basically what it means grace is like they're always like hey if you want to come meet him his name is Darwin. So he's he still alive and well and thriving up there. He's killing it. He's killing it. Great. Um, okay, great. But Glad I do get sad it. updates from them, too. I do get newsletters that are like, you know, like Marilyn the Macaw is. And I'm just uh, like, didn't uh, know her. I'm here for Darwin. Yeah. <laughs> um, but they have a monkey that paints. And mm. I, well, they have a primate that paints. I'm not sure. I don't remember what kind of primate. But I remember being like, hey, I'd love to buy one. Um, I've yeah. been an avid Darwin supporter for yeah. uh, close to a decade. Uh, <laughs> and I'd love it. And then they were like, they quoted me something insane. And I was like, guys, I understand this goes for the primates. But like, this yeah. is, this is, I mean, this is on like construction paper. 
with like and it this took is him bad art 30 this seconds is bad, very bad art <laughs> you know, it wasn't it wasn't like i was asking for coco the gorilla's art pieces that like he right. used to hang out with you know like robin williams and was like really thoughtful about it this is like some little spider monkey who's just kind of shitting out a couple finger paints yeah and they were yeah. like that'll be fifteen hundred dollars i was like are you insane but wow. this raccoon, I wonder how expensive his art is. And actually, I'd well, love to know how good it is, if we're being honest. Yeah. And now that <laughs> the accolade of the Cadbury Bunny, I'm sure the prices are going to go up. Oh, because okay. that is quite the legitimate title. So we'll have to see. But we'll have to um, see. congratulations, Louis the Raccoon. Okay. I have to say this crazy ass story that... Okay. Um, I feel like I had written months ago to bring up and then I forgot. And then I went on Instagram asking for suggestions and someone was like, I'm begging you to talk about this. Have you heard about this? That Stephen King played Mambo number five yep. so much that his wife almost divorced him. I do. I do know that. I do know that. <laughs> it lives crazy. rent free in my head. This what is, I want to know I, I want to know what is Stephen King's wife's name and is her name in the song? And that was one of the reasons why he kept playing it. Well, this is what the Variety article says. Okay. Uh, so he said, uh, I guess they asked about it. And he said, quote, oh, yeah, big time. King said when asked if the rumors about his love for Mambo number no. five are true. Quote, my wife threatened to divorce me. I played that a lot. I had the dance mix, the author continued. <gasps> I loved those extended play things, and I played both sides of it. And one what? of them was just total instrumental. And I <gasps> played that thing until my wife just said, one more time and I'm going to fucking leave you. <laughs> so he was just playing the instrumental of Mambo Number no. 5, which could you know be what? arguably more telltale heart torturous than the actual lyrics of the song. <laughs> You know what? If I was playing it, and obviously it helped his creativity. Stephen King pumps out a novel like every month. Like he's he's yeah. on a he's on a roll. He's not doing anything that's going to distract him. If my spouse yeah. was like, if you play that one more time, I'd be like, one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a I mean, fantastic King, fucking song listening to Lou Bega's Mambo number no. 5 also he's been happily married to Tabitha King since 1971 okay a little bit of Tabitha is that in there I don't I don't not off the top of my head do I know think that Tabitha is in that song but I maybe mean, that what's so crazy is like that song Lou came Bega out Lou Bega was a German singer sorry yeah I was looking at Wow, okay. Uh huh. Um, oh well, if you look up Mama Number Five and Tabitha, you're just gonna see this story. But I'll, I'll do some research. But I like that came out when I was in college. I mean, when I was in high school. And I think about like yeah. Mambo Number Five. Like when we're talking about driving by boys' houses, legitimately yeah. pumping Mambo Number Five. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. just uh, that. Just I I feel like I should be put Being- out the pasture. Being genuinely <laughs> devastated that my name was not featured in Mambo Number no. Five, feeling well, I didn't less a of a woman because yeah, you <laughs> didn't stand a chance. <laughs> but I remember like driving to gymnastics practice, and they would come on the radio, and I'd be like, "Fun song," but <laughs> I feel so left out. I feel oh so God. left out. <laughs> You're like that How meme will of men that little girl. To think about me. You're like the meme of that little girl Ava who's like it's cute I wish I could have it <laughs> good song <laughs> wish I was featured as a name yeah that would be nice oh, oh my god yeah. that's so oh, funny Stephen well maybe King. I'm I'm down here writing and it's been hard to get into the groove so maybe that's exactly what I need maybe maybe oh my god. okay um, here's one little thing I'll I'll leave you with because yeah I'm, great I'm, cr- I'm crashing I'm crashing no um, I need to watch the bachelor finale Girl, okay, okay, it's like two hours. I haven't watched it. And the 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 like actual matrix level bending I did to I know. just try to look up stuff for the podcast while resisting spoilers was insane. Oh, I can't even imagine. So we went to dinner last night and I came back and I have Hulu live. So I know like yeah. as long as I catch something while it's still on, I can start over. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love that. Didn't let me do it last night. 
So <gasps> I was I was going in. I was holding my hand over the laptop so I couldn't see because I'd have to go to live. Yeah, yeah. Like muted, cl- start over, start over. It wouldn't let me. So I just started it when like the you know beach altar was happening so i have to go back and watch like them meeting the family so i know the outcome okay. and i know after the final rose and i know the new bachelorette and all that jazz oh, but shit. i did okay but I, but I didn't see the early business so please watch it so we can talk yes so because you can't go on twitter you can't go on tiktok you can't do nothing i know so what i'm about to do after this is get extraordinarily high and watch Ooh. that while making a hello fresh meal so oh i got a big night ahead Grace, I'm like really happy for you. That sounds like Thank a lovely you. night. I'm so excited. Oh my God. See, I'm with a friend who like loves to go out to dinner, but she's she's on a Zoom till eight and all I want to mm. do is nothing for the rest of the night. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But we'll see if that gets to happen. Anyway, when I was, I told you about it on the podcast last week, when I got motivated to take a walk and then I got far and then I felt like I was going to throw up and had to sit on a bench for like 30 minutes. <laughs> Elliot keeps asking, he's like, is she okay from that? Like he was so concerned. Oh. Oh, that's you're gonna have to put me down like a rat. Uh, <laughs> that rat had more people upset than I will. Um, <laughs> but anyway, when I was sitting there, I forgot to tell you that it just felt because you and I just did the overheard podcast this past yeah. week, and I was like, oh, I did overhear something this week. Not much to discuss, but since you know this stuff, I wanted to see if it was true or if this person was bullshitting. These mm. two girls walk by, and one of them just goes. Yeah, we're just like both deeply committed to the way we are. And then the friend goes, I love that. That is so fire sign of the both of you. Oh. Is that real? Is that a fire sign thing to be committed to who you are? Like I, you give me, I think more credit than what I actually know oh. about this stuff, <laughs> but I will say, yeah, cause fire signs, aren't they stubborn? I think they're very passionate. Mm. They're very potentially stubborn. Something that's that what I would sense. assume. So that would, that would track. Yeah. Anyway. And this is I, coming from a, what is What am I an air? I think I'm an air sign. So of course I'm not decisive on what I believe to be true in this case. What's the Virgo? <laughs> what, what a sign am I? What do I? Am I like dirt or something? So that's also, okay. I had one, I think we should do another ranking food soon. Oh, for sure. Figure out what it is. But the other thing I was going to say, because I just did this for my stepbrother, is if you're comfortable, I would love to read your birth chart. Uh If you know where you're born and what time you're born. But only if you're comfortable. And it wouldn't be an exposing of anything uh, okay. in I'm, any way, shape, or form. Just throwing that out. You're an Earth sign. Oh, by the way. okay. I have no idea if that's good or bad. Um, <laughs> a pretty earthy over here. Got it. Um, yeah, I feel like I'm one of those people who's asked my mom thirty times over the course sure. of living in LA for a decade what time of day I was born. I know it's early in the morning, but I'll find out the deets. Potential. And just throwing it out there my- for the future. Read it, girl. You know I'm in a moment now where I'm like, I I want I'm in a big purge moment. I got rid of most nice. of my closet. I'm like something's got to. My energy needs to shift. I need to mix it yeah. up. I need I need yeah. a I need a little zip zip a recharge. I don't know if yeah. it's chain of scenery or what. But so learning my birth chart might we'll just see. work. But that's to say that I do think before we do that we should do another food ranking episode potentially oh, yeah. next week week after. I'm just throwing it out there. Putting okay, it on well, our radar. Hold on. Should we say what it's going to be so that way people can start right. to like really think about it? Do we want to do pastas? Is that the easiest one to do next? What were other options? We talked soup. about this on Patreon. Soup. Pastas? I'm not super lit up about soup. Okay. <laughs> well, pastas I love. I just don't know if it's like, I don't know if pastas are, uh, everyone Too? likes pasta, right? Why don't we try pastas? Well, like we did... Like we did before when it was like, try five. And then you're like, we need 10. Why don't we try to think of pastas think and we'll give it a day or two. And if both of us are like, this is too hard, then we'll figure something else out. If we need to switch what we're ranking, mm-hmm. we'll put it on our Patreon and Instagrams. So Great. if you're not following us on either of those platforms, first mm-hmm. of all, how fucking dare you? Yes. Tell them. Second of all, you're lost. Yeah. You'll just be you surprised. <laughs> <laughs> okay that sounds great um i think you should write a a short film about the rat being put down and uh and this got weird yeah it did 